In the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna be showing you the Rolex Submariner Hulk like you have never seen it before. But before we do that, let's do whisper mode. Alexa, put Rolex Submariner Hulk on the shopping list. Rolex Submariner Hulk added to your shopping list. Alexa, thank you. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, baby. supposed to be servicing this Rolex Submariner Hulk but the boys turned up to the workshop Buzz with Lightyear. a broken Buzz Lightyear so I fixed him instead and Buzz Lightyear actually took a little bit of time to uh, put back together so take a little bit of time out of my schedule so I have actually cracked on with this watch and so one of the first things we do in the service is to ultrasonically clean the case and as you can see this has come out really really nice we're going to put new gaskets in this now and get this in the pressure testing tank because of course you know the hulk is a submariner it needs to keep the water out And just focusing them for a moment on the way in which the powertrain works. And of course, we start with the stem here and the crown. And as we turn that, that turns the winding pinion, which is being pushed back against by the clutch in the winding position, which in turn turns the crown wheel in the center of the frame there. The crown wheel turns the intermediate wheels that you can see there and they turn the ratchet wheel, which is stopped from going backwards by the click. And as the ratchet wheel turns, it has the effect of putting power on the spring. Now, that power is then transmitted to the three wheels that you can see there in the power train. And you've got the second wheel there in the middle of the frame. Now that is the first wheel to take up the power from the mainspring barrel. Then we've got the second wheel, sorry, the third wheel in the middle of the frame there. And then onto the fourth wheel. And finally, we come to the escape wheel. And now when the escapement is not attached and the pallet fork is not stopping the escape wheel, uh, the whole train is free to move. So if I just touch now and put a tiny little bit of power onto the train in the stem, you'll see it just jump into action. And with a Rolex, it's very, very lovely. So if I just touch it, the tiniest little touch now, and you can see the train there spinning into action. And if we just take a quick look at the escape wheel as we do that, you can see that that is really going for it. Now, of course, we now need to put the escapement in to regulate the release of that power that we're putting onto the spring. And here then is the balance wheel that you can see, uh, which is a free sprung balance wheel with the parachrom hairspring that you can see there, nice blue hairspring. And you can see very clearly the four balance screws there. And using a special tool, we move those screws either towards the center or out towards the rim of the balance. And the latter direction slows the motion of the balance. And as you move them inwards towards the center, it quickens the motion of the balance.
And that is the case then down inside the water, inside the pressure testing tank. I'm just about to let the air out of the top of the tank. And if you see a whole host of bubbles come out, then the case has been compromised. If you see just a few bubbles, it's absolutely fine. So we are charged up to 60 meters worth of water pressure against this case. So let's do the test now. Okay, and that guys is a pass. The air that you saw coming out there was just trapped under the bezel. If it had been compromised, it would have been a whole lot more dramatic than that. And here is the pallet fork and the pallet fork bridge there with the single jewel that you can see and it's two retaining screws. Now this is really, you know, a very small component and the pivot there on the, the top is, you know, really very delicate. So a huge amount of care has to be taken when you uh, replace that into the movement. Also the jewels themselves uh, on the end of the pallet fork, they require a, you know, very special lubricant, uh, which is really just for those jewels. Uh, most people use a thing called Mobius 9415 for that. Uh, and yeah, and it's a lubricant that you just use for that purpose and doesn't appear anywhere else inside the watch. Now the Calendar Works has a thing called an advancing wheel which has a cam underneath it and that is held in place by this cam yoke and this tiny tiny little jewel that you can see there which if I just come in a little bit closer if I can just focus on that that is probably about a millimeter across so you know really very very small top tip is don't put this component in the ultrasonic cleaner because the likelihood that you'll find that jewel is vanishingly small. And there then in the center of the frame is the advancing wheel with the odd shaped bit of metal, uh, the steel on top of it there, which is the cam and the tiny little jewel is uh, pressed up against that under tension uh, and under quite a lot of tension as well. So you have to be really careful when you're putting this bit together. Otherwise, the uh, the jewel uh, powered by the spring will just fly across the room and you will never find it. And there is the yoke uh, with its tiny little jewel tucked in underneath the retention plate there for the advancing wheel. And uh, we've just got another tiny little wheel to pop in in that jewel that you can see in the center of the frame there. And we are ready to put the uh, bridge on the top of the calendar works because that's all the components in then. So I've just put the bridge on that uh, retains all of these calendar works here. And you can just see, just see how just gorgeous this is. The one thing that you, you have to make sure obviously that it's you know, properly in place. You can just see in the center of the frame there coming into focus the end of the date wheel jumper spring. And there is that little wheel that I mentioned and you have to make sure if I just uh, zoom in on that, at the pivot on that little wheel next to the advancing, well, it's difficult to see there, is through. So you might have to have a good look at that with the loop just to make sure because at this resolution it's like it's quite a tiny little wheel but that's all looking good we're going to secure that down now with the four blued screws and then we can replace the calendar wheel and then we're good to turn the watch over and get into the escapement and there is the date wheel in place it locates under these three discs at the edge here and then to uh, locate it firmly into place or loosely into place there's that little retaining clip that you can see there now in the center of the frame so you just turn that through 90 degrees let's just have a little look at that 
that retaining clip right there. You just turn that through 90 degrees and that holds it loosely in place because it has to be free to move. So I've tested the operation of that. So we can now flip the movement over and put in the pallet fork and the uh, balance and get the watch going again. Okay, so this is the uh, lubricant that you need for the stones, uh, the jewels in the end of the pallet fork. It's a Mobius uh, 9415. And I have just lubricated the stones on this pallet fork. As you can see, they're very, very tiny. Let's see if we can come in here and just look. You don't want too much, just a little bit on the ends there. And you need to know which parts of the jewel actually contact with the escape wheel because you don't want too much of this stuff flying around, only a very, very little bit. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, bearing in mind, each one of those jewels is, you know, I don't know, uh, 0.3 of a millimeter across. So we're talking quite a small component here. And it's a little difficult to see because of the uh, resolution that we're at, but that is the pallet fork located in its bottom jewel. You have to make sure that the pivot is in the bottom jewel before you put the bridge on. And then you have to be very, very careful putting the bridge on because those pivots are about the size of a human hair and they'll, they'll snap off very easily if you get this wrong. Now that is the pallet fork back in then and to check its operation, if you put a little bit of power on the mainspring, you'll see it lock into place. And then if you gently move it to one side with a clean oiler, uh, you'll see it suddenly flick across, which is it acting as though the uh, impulse jewel is um, uh, taking it out of a lock. And uh, so, yeah, uh, we can put the balance in now, put a little bit of power on the spring, put the balance in and watch it go. And there she goes, and it's always a little bit of a lift when you put the balance back in at this stage in the service and watch it fly into action. But there is still a lot of work to do because now we have to do the real uh, careful business of regulating the balance in five positions so that when the owner of the watch wears it, it keeps good time on the wrist. So we're just about ready now to put the hands on, but check out the way the light plays on this Rolex Hulk's beautiful, beautiful green, emerald green dial. Uh, you know, it's the kind of trademark for this watch and it is absolutely gorgeous. So I make no apology for coming in a little bit closer on this dial now. And just lining up the dial so that I can place on the hour hand now. And before doing this, it's important to make sure that you are at midnight uh, because of course the calendar complication has to line up with the hands. And the specification for this is it, it needs to click over between uh, two minutes before midnight and one minute after. That is the Rolex specification. And just placing on the hour hand there now. And that's good. And on the time grapher then after an initial regulation of the watch and the important thing that you can see there is a zero beat error and a really nice high amplitude of 321 degrees, which makes the job of doing the regulation over the next four or five days, you know, really meaningful. But we've only got to tweak it very, very slightly because as you can see, the watch is running on rails there. Nought B error, 321 degrees and plus five seconds a day. And it's as steady as a rock. Let's take one last look at this gorgeous dial. And there we have it then, the Rolex Submariner Hulk. And, you know, it looks pretty outside, but boy, is it a beautiful watch inside as well. And just so, so functional. Like all of these watches by Rolex, Rolex make great watches and they make superlative 
movements and it's just an utter joy to work on these watches guys if you like my videos then please subscribe i'm making a lot of content at the moment and if you've enjoyed this video then give it a thumbs up but from a small town here on the coast of southwest wales called pembroke dock that's all that i've got for you tonight so good night and god bless